Welcome back to Angling Buzz Ice. This episode is all about walleye. That's a lot of fun. And right now we're pulling the Yeti Fish House onto a great walleye destination, Leech Lake. So let's kick off the show with what Leech Lake has to offer. Oh, beautiful day on lovely Leech Lake. This is one of my favorite bodies of water. Yeah, I love this lake. Uh, it's one of those lakes that has a little bit of everything, and everything in it can get big. That being said, doesn't mean they're gonna jump up your hole, but it's a phenomenal lake. Yeah, you've been guiding here for close to 30 years and seen the big changes, but it's still a lake that has quality fish of most all species, so it's a fun one to fish. Like you mentioned, bro, Leech is so diverse, it's like, Steamboat Bay is its own lake. Walker Bay, Agency Bay, totally different bodies of water compared to Sucker. Portage Bay, boy, headquarters, there's so many different types of habitat in this lake and different fishing opportunities in all of them. Well, just a lake that's got jumbo perch, that doesn't happen everywhere. And then right. healthy walleye population, crappies that could push over 15 inches, big bluegills, trophy muskies. Mm -hmm. uh, white fish had held the state record for quite a while and uh, everything else i mean it's it's the dream lake uh, for someone to to fish or retire on all right there he is slab wrap walleye it's amazing how qual i mean the quality walleye fishery that leech lake provides it's uh, one of those deals that years ago it had kind of gone through a crash but now there's just an abundance of quality fish in the lake the fishery's changing but it's just incredibly healthy. Really um, comes down to management. They've just done a heck of a job managing this place. So you can come out and catch fish every time you're here. It's just great. Get them back. Hey, dude. There we go. Oh, I love fishing this lake. You know, the neat thing about this lake is the aggressive fish. Oh, there's a nice one. This shallow water, they're just right there. I'm using a buckshot flutter spoon and I like to tip it with a minnow head, just using like just the head or the front torso. And the lake is full of walleyes. Uh, perch aren't everywhere in the lake. Uh, perch gen generally are in uh, weeded areas. And in the winter, sometimes there could be perch in the muddy areas of the main lake, the deeper water. Uh, but for the most part, they move up on these flats. Oh, there's a nice one. They move up on the flats to feed on crayfish. Oh, that's yeah. a beauty. Yeah, that's what we've been. That, that's a good eater right there. Nice uh, perchy. Chasing these and uh, catching walleyes and and on the nice days they bite and on the bad days they bite. So there's always something out here. Another nice one. Cool, we're getting them. You know, one thing when it comes to the equipment for perch, <clears throat> I generally tend to go a little heavier than lighter, especially up here. A lot of times it's just a few feet that you're fishing, you just lift the fish up. So I've got two rods that I'm fishing with. One is uh, St. Croix Custom Ice, it's the outside eye, so it's basically a walleye rod. I mean, jumbo perch can be the size of smaller walleyes, and we're running into quite a few walleyes. And the other one is the perch seeker, which is another just great option for fishing baits like the slab wraps, some smaller jigging and wraps. But Lure choices for me when I'm perch fishing out here are generally something basically big, bigger, you know, it's basically small walleye stuff that I can just get down quick. And it seems like the bigger baits often select for the bigger fish. That's not always true. Sometimes you do have to downsize, but when we're running and gunning like this, I just like to have a, a bigger stick. I'm running just a six pound uh, Suffolk 832 braid on here, a little barrel swivel, six pound fluorocarbon leader and it's just boom, boom, boom. We can bounce hole to hole, fish with a little bit bigger baits. And when you get fish, you just gotta basically lift them up. Boom, there they are. Oh, here we go. This one looks like a better fish. Oh, there, holy cow, he snuck up on me and nailed it. This 
one feels actually pretty decent. I don't think it's the uh, perch we're looking for. Whew. Oh, dang it. Got off. That was a nice fish. That was a nice fish. It's kind of cool fishing. We're fishing pretty shallow here, like less than 10 feet over weeds. And, you know, typically we're targeting perch here, but there's a lot of walleyes roaming in here. But it's crazy. It's like high noon right now. And we're less than 10 feet and these fish are like way more active than they were this morning so kind of a fun deal to fish just a little jack but the species keep piling up that'd be a good eating pike but he might be in the in the slot you know this lake is big and it can be intimidating to fish to fish big water and you know, when you do get on these, these areas like Portage Bay and Sucker Bay, there are just, of course, massive flats all over the lake. And one of the things that we'll, we'll look for is where there's, the contour changes are so subtle that you're often looking for areas where the bottom changes. So leech has a lot of caragrass. It's a basically sand grass, a lot of people call it, little algae that grows a little, just a little bit off the bottom. But that holds a ton of fish generally. If you can find areas where it grows from, say, sand to sand grass, or you might have cabbage or milfoil or different plant types. Those can often be the key holding areas on these, on these types of flats. So having a guy cutting, looking, you know, with their sonar for fish and another guy in an underwater camera, that can be a really good program when you're trying to find fish in these areas that seem featureless, but there's so many fish in the lake, you often don't have to hunt that hard before you finally run into a few of them. You know, Leech Lake, in the years I've been here, I've been guiding 26 years, but I've been fishing Leech Lake 10 years before that. So 36 years of fishing Leech Lake, I've seen some changes in the fishery. And with all the balances and different species of fish, it's pretty amazing to have a body of water like this. And uh, I'm hoping that this lake can stay good for years to come. So one thing about Leech Lake is it's big. It's 112 to almost 113,000 acres, and it's almost like multiple lakes together. But even a fish like that perch can get over harvested. So it, the size does save it, but fishing pressure increases over the years. So one thing cool about Leech Lake is they connect to each other around the lake, the businesses, the resorts, the fishermen, the guides, everybody, and they talk and um, assess what how they think the fisheries are and talk to the DNR about it. and. One thing that's cool is um, they're tightening up regulations here because they're seeing more fishing pressure up here. So to keep the good size fish, they're proposing changing regs on the panfish. So this lake still has big panfish. There's good sized perch, there's big bluegills, and there's still big crappies. So to keep the count down, they're proposing five fish bluegill, five fish crappie, 10 fish perch. And this might go in effect as early as next year or two years down the road. But by doing this, it's acknowledging that this lake is a good fishery and they want to keep it a good fishery. And the way you do that is to reduce harvest. Now, Leech Lake is an incredible walleye fishery, but they're not everywhere. So before we drop the Yeti down, we're going to get out, punch a few holes, hopefully find some walleye. But if not, we'll find a spot with a bunch of bait and we'll get set up for prime time. Soft bottom with a little sand grass mixed over it. Just like everywhere else, yeah. Oh, that's the walleye. Yeah, there we go. That is a beauty. Boy, when they first cut it, cut the hole, I mean, they came up shooting off the bottom, like four feet off the bottom. It's where their walleyes, the way they bite, they're so aggressive. Another big mark down there. Two big marks, look at that. The Leech Lake is just loaded with flats, with sand grass. Who knows, might get a nice walleye, might get a nice pike, might get some Cisco. Look at that. We never know. All right, so now we've got a spot where we're going to set up the Yeti. We've got a group of guys out here with us. We've caught some fish, a couple jumbos. We've marked a few walleyes. We're seeing a bunch of bait. And where we're at is we've got, we're on a break here. It's 11 feet, and it shoots down to about 14 feet. You see I've got it highlighted there. And how we'll position the Yeti is in the back end. We'll be in about 11 feet right at the top of the break. And the front end will be in about 14, so we're going to cover the whole depth range. 
Now, as I drop the Yeti, let's join Brad Hawthorne as he shows you how to use the Hummingbird 360 for walleyes. Hey guys, Brad Hawthorne, and I'm going to show you how I utilize Mega 360 when we're out fishing. The most important thing is antenna and screen orientation. You want them at a 90. You want your screen this way and you want your antenna arrow pointing this way. Keep it at a 90 and you know where everything is so that when you mark a big pot of fish or a big ball of crappies, you can drop a waypoint on it, walk right over to it. So drop it down and it'll start calculating. And the first thing you're gonna see is the structure you're on. And then after that, what you're gonna see is fish. Once I get a full rotation here, I'm gonna show you what I look for when I'm trying to find fish with Hummingbird Mega 360. You see this transition line here? It, I mean, it's just definite. Actually, if you look right here, that's a fish pretty much right below me. Yep, he's still there. So this is where the gravel is, right here. And this is where the mud is. This is why I use Mega 360. These fish are always gonna be in this area. These are really key areas to find. Transition lines on the lac are just hot. Like, it's, it's, it's a thing. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm looking for fish out here. So what I'm gonna do is go in and I'm gonna go to color palette three, okay? And I'm just gonna watch this and I'm just gonna look for hot grains of rice is what I'm gonna look for in here. If I see something moving through here, I know that there's a fish. And the main thing to watch for on 360 is movement. Rocks don't move, gravel doesn't move, weeds typically don't move, you know. You're looking for fish and you'll see them as they're coming across the screen. You can get an idea of where they're coming from, how they're using it, and how many are coming through at a crack. And then you just kind of use that information, pile it all together. And that's where you want to fish, that's where you want to concentrate your holes, or that's where you want to set up your, your wheelhouse or, or your portable. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you from top to bottom how I use my Hummingbird 360 on the line. I'm gonna let it get a couple of rotations on it. And what I'm gonna do is show you how I got to this screen, okay? And this is pretty easy. I go in here, my sensitivity is at about 19. My contrast is at about 13. My range is 80. My, my color palette, I'm on four, okay? Now I use from basically two to four. So I'm gonna show you a color palette three. You see how that got hotter? That rock really pops out, like that transition's more, more defined. I use color palette three more when I'm on the mud. You know, this is more hard. So then I go to two and you see how I got some shadowing, like that'll show you like there's a little depression there, you know, just different color palettes make different things pop out. So I'm basically from two, two to four on my color palettes in the winter. Like there's four, gives me a lot of definition. You see a lot more fish, in my opinion, on color palette four. Then you go to five. And then if I go to display, 360, speed, I run speed two. And the reason I run speed two is I find that I get a really crisp image. Um, the slower it turns, which you're talking slow, it takes like eight seconds to make a, a total you know, circle. So. Speed 2 really gives you a nice crisp image. You can see pike outlines really good on it. You can see rock, you can see walleyes, you can see bluegill. I just use Speed 2, it makes it real clean. So if you remember that, 19, 13, 80, color palette 4. You can run this contrast on or off. If it's off, you're gonna see fish better. If it's on, you're gonna see structure better. And then Speed 2, that's the recipe I use right there. And I really don't get away from that too much other than the color palettes. And when you get to the color palettes that you know heat it up a lot, then from there, all I'm doing is adjusting sensitivity. It's a pretty simple setup once you have it, once you have it dialed in like this. You know, once you have it built, a few settings and it's plug and play. So what I got here laid out on this piece of structure is I got a big rock straight ahead of me, like literally straight ahead of me. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put one of the fish houses on there and then I'm gonna take, based on where I'm seeing fish, I'm seeing that rock is right on the transition line. So I'm gonna put a house as close to that rock, not on top of it, but like on one side of it. And then I'm gonna put another house right on the edge of this transition line. Well, that didn't take long. All we did was move that house by the big rock and this one on the transition line. Now, the one thing you're gonna to wanna to do 
is anticipate the fish's movement. So right here, we're gonna keep an eye on this. That looks like a fish to me. So if you see them coming and the screen rotates and they're here on the screen and then it comes around again and they're here, you don't wanna go fish here. You wanna anticipate those fish staying on that same trail and go another 20 feet that way. That's the most important part that I've learned about Mega360 is anticipating where those fish are going and getting ahead of them. Got them. Dude, so we just, just whacked or we just marked this fish on 360 and we're like, yep, it's 35 feet over. Literally came in, this hole is froze over, kicked it open and whacked this fish. Just super, super awesome. So like that shows you, put 360 down, take a look at it. And then when you see these marks that are moving around, go take a look at them and catch the fish, man. Catch the walleye. Oh, come up here, come, oh, look at this big guy. That is the product of Mega360 and using it correctly right there. And that, that is a chunky, chunky Mille Lacs walleye. So you guys, you put all those pieces together and recipe for success and come on out here and catch fish with the Mega360. Next, we're gonna join one of the best walleye anglers out there, Jason Mitchell, and he's gonna show you how to target and catch bigger walleyes. You know, when it comes to catching big walleyes, obviously, you know, someone's just catching enough walleyes, and since if you catch so many walleyes and there's a percentage of fish that are big, you're gonna encounter those big fish no matter what you're doing. You know, you can, you know, it's not like you can fish for an 18 inch walleye and fish for a 30 inch walleye. And, I mean, if you're just fishing for walleyes, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna encounter some of those big fish over time. But with that being said, you know, there's something I believe in, you know, as far as big baits, big fish, and some of those that, you know, some of the smaller fish are probably more likely to leave you alone. So it's an efficiency thing where you're gonna have your lure or bait in the water for longer periods of time. And I just think, you know, those big fish are just in tune to eating a bigger bait. And so whether we're up on Lake Winnipeg, you know, Green Bay, wherever, you know, we use bigger baits on, on water capable of producing big fish. It was just a big, uh, you know, like a pig flutter spoon on a Winnipeg or, a, you, know, you know, some of the bigger horizontal swim baits or glide baits. You know, those are all great lures that I've caught a lot of big fish on over the years. And, you know, another thing that's really effective for big fish is using big suckers or chubs. I'm talking, you know, stuff that's six to up to 12 inches long. You know, you put a, you know, put a spread of tip ups out with a good bait, big bait where big fish live, and it's just a matter of time, you know, and so that's a great, you know, formula that's just accounted for a lot of big fish over the years for a lot of people. Now, those were great, Jason, but do you have any tips for when fishing gets slow? You know, a lot of times on a lot of bodies of water, when it comes to walleye fish, you know, you've got that morning and evening of prime time. You know, it might be a half an hour where these fish roll through and they make you look good. You know, you can use just your classic spoons, your glide baits, your swim lures, and you know, fish come in, you jig somewhat aggressively, the fish respond aggressively, those fish just punch it. But the reality is that when that sun gets a little bit higher in the morning, for example, you also have that, that window, kind of the shoulder of that bite window where you're still marking fish, but those fish aren't making it look as good. They're a lot harder to catch. And so one thing that I find is if I can identify that and just make an adjustment right away while I still have traffic below me, I can usually catch, you know, quite a few more fish at times and so a lot of times I'll just downsize. You know, I can't tell you how many walleyes I've caught on just like a, a drop XL jiggle with just a minnow head. You know, or even like stuff you'd use for crappies, you know, downsize right away. And the other thing is that the fish are really responding negatively as the sun gets high where they're just coming up and just sucking on it and they're not punching that lure. Is you know, sometimes I find that if I switch up to monofilament, I catch more of those fish because I lift up and those fish don't quite feel me. And by the time I feel them and they feel me, that fish is is hooked and so just a couple of adjustments but start out big and bold and aggressive during that prime time window call in as many fish as you can when that sun gets a little bit higher and you're still running traffic but the fish aren't responding downsize you a little bit more finesse and you might be able to double the amount of fish you catch by just expanding that opportunity confidence with the exception of luck has to be one of the most important factors when it comes to fishing so next, we'll join Ty Shadeen as he shows you how to be confident in new baits. Here comes the fish. Got him. There he is. He smoked it. Get a out of there. Oh, there we go. That's a good eater. Perfect. 
you know, around your early seasons, early ice, the one thing that I see a lot of fishermen doing is they're, they're walking on the ice with a tackle bag full of tackle. In, in reality, when they come out here, they're using a handful of those baits. And why are they using those baits? It's because they've got the confidence in them because they've actually caught fish on those in the past. And really, in my opinion, the best time to build confidence in, in lures that you've never used or maybe there's new, new lures on the market is to actually use them early season. That one's going to be a good eater. What I'm talking about is uh, typically this time of year I take baits that I know are tried and true year in and year out and I set them aside. I grab baits like I was saying before that are maybe new on the market or ones that I've never even tried before but I know that they catch fish. I'm using them early season and actually building those co that confidence in those baits and adding them to my arsenal that I'm using all season long. While on the topic of new baits, it's time for this show's Cool Products. All right, to kick off this episode's Cool Products, we're gonna start with the Clam C560 Thermal Hub House. Now this hub house fishes three to four anglers comfortably. It has a thermal shell that traps heat and reduces condensation. It collapses down into a small carrying bag for easy transportation. And if you're a walleye angler that's looking to go out and maybe fish overnight, this is a great hub option for you. Now, speaking of staying warm on the ice, Clam has a couple great options for your hands. To start it off, it's the extreme cold weather mitts. Now these mitts have 150 grams of insulation, they're wind and waterproof, and they're gonna keep your hands warm in the toughest conditions. Now the other option is the Clam Edge Cold Weather Glove. Now they're insulated, windproof, and waterproof. They're also double stitched, so they're gonna hold up to the wear and tear of the ice season. If you're a serious walleye angler, you've definitely used a spoon. And there probably isn't a more recognized spoon out there than the Northland Buckshot Rattle Spoon. Now this spoon has been around for decades with its rattles and BBs calling in fish the whole time. Something new to Northland this year is the Glow Shot Fire Belly Spoon. This spoon has a similar profile to the Buckshot Rattle Spoon, but instead of the rattles, it has a glow stick in the middle for added fish attraction. Now on the topic of spoons, here's another great option by VMC, and that's the VMC Tumbler Spoon. Now its unique profile gives it a really slow falling action. It comes in UV and regular colors, and it also has a blade down here by the treble that gives it some extra flash. This tipped with a minnow head is a deadly combo. We've been catching walleyes, so let's talk about a classic walleye lure. That's the Rapala Jigging Wrap. Now this bait comes in sizes from two all the way up to size nine. It comes in a multitude of colors and it's darting and erratic action calls in and catches fish. Now speaking of minnow style baits, Rapala is not alone. And new this year is the Clam Tika Minnow. Now this bait has a similar action to the Jigging Wrap, although this is gonna come in a different and crazy variety of colors. And finally, Northland's version of this bait, the Puppet Minnow. Now this bait comes in a wide variety of sizes and colors. It has that same darting erratic action. And actually new this year, Northland created a rattling Puppet Minnow that has rattles inside. Those lures are useless unless you have some good line. So here we're gonna talk about Suffix's Invisalign Ice Fluorocarbon. Now it comes in sizes from two pound up to eight pound. It's abrasion resistant. It's a low stretch and it can be used as your main line or makes a great leader line. Unless you want to be hand lining, Daiwa makes a great option for you and it's the Daiwa Regal LT1000. Now this reel has 10 ball bearings, it's got an ultra smooth drag system and it's just a great mid-size walleye reel. Now being mobile and using live bait can often be difficult, but here's something to make it a little easier for you. And that's Strike Master's Bait Puck and Bait Bucket. Now with the Bait Puck, you can fit waxies in here, minnow heads, it fits right in a pocket, you're good to go. With the Bait Bucket, you know, you can fit maybe half a dozen, a dozen minnows, live ones in here, carry this around, and then wherever you go, you have live, fresh bait.
now there's a few more items I want to show you and we're going to start off with the Aquaview quad cam. Now why it's called the quad cam is it's actually got four cameras in one housing unit so you got 360 degree view of where you're fishing. It's got a 1080p HD color camera so you got a crystal clear image. It's got HDMI capability as you can see you can hook it up to a TV. Now you can do multiple lures in multiple different directions. It's got an optional swivel base for better cord management. And if you're going to fish in a wheelhouse, this is the camera you want. Now one cool product you guys saw in an earlier segment is the Hummingbird Mega 360. Now this is a great item for highlighting bottom compositions, searching for fish. You, we use it a bunch for basin crappies. You know, you can see weed lines with this. You can see rock piles, mud lines, different transitions. Now if you have this on your boat, you can order this bracket and a few other accessories from Hummingbird. It's compatible with Helix's size 8 or bigger with DI or SI capabilities. This is just a great unit for locating bottom structure and finding fish and it's seriously going to make you a better angler. Now the last two items are the custom ice rods and since we're in the house we're going to start with the St. Croix Custom Ice House Rod. Now this is a 30 inch medium power extra fast action you know it's a real generalist rod so if you're looking to do panfish bass light walleye this is a rod that can do it all it's got a sensitive tip it's got the recoil guides that cut down on the weight it's great for fishing indoors and if you're looking to get into those custom ice sticks that can kind of do it all this is the rod for you now if you're looking to step it up for bigger baits and bigger fish new this year to tune up custom rods is their Vulcan now it comes in sizes from 34 up to 44 inches it's a glass rod, so it's just made for those big fish. You know, it's gonna survive a trip up in the Canadian bush. It's got the recoil guides, loads into some great backbone and keeps those fish pinned. And it's just an overall beaten stick for those trophy walleyes, pike, burbot, and lakers. Oh, there's one. There we go. Now, when it comes to walleye fishing, you don't always need the most expensive or the best stuff. You really just need the right stuff. So let's join Jer and Ty as they show you the essentials for walleyes. Oh, that's yeah, not a walleye jig. <laughs> yeah, we got a bourbon. That's he's, even better. And he's coming in backwards, <laughs> like they do, like they do. Guess what? We're probably gonna get another one here too. Absolutely. Now let's join Jer and Ty as they show you the essential gear for walleyes. Come on. Got, got him. him, huh? Got him, got him, got him. Bring the bucket oh, and the yeah. ruler over for walleye. you. Walleye, beautiful little walleye, huh? Isn't that what everybody loves catching in the winter is getting a nice batch of walleye. A little over 16 and a half. Now, walleye fishing, I'm gonna keep this guy, throw him in the bucket. Or any ice fishing for that matter can be really as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. And one of the easiest setups that you can have for basically ice fishing throughout the year. It's just something that you can get down to the fish. So what I'm fishing with right now is just a VMC rattle spoon. It's just an eighth ounce rattle spoon here and I've got a minnow head on it. That thing will catch fish all season long. And now when it comes to you know the rod and reel setup that you're using, I'm fishing a pretty high-end piece of equipment here because I'm, I'm into it. This is St. Croix's Customize, this is their deep spoon rod. It's a medium light, fast action. So you can see that it's got a nice fast tip on it. The center section flexes really nicely so you can absorb the head shakes of the fish. That's how you do it, boys. And then I've got it paired with the size 1000 reel on here. Now I like a bigger reel. For most ice fishing applications, I just feel like it's better for line management. This happens to be an Acceler. It's an LT from Iowa, really smooth drag on it. It's just an awesome system and that bigger spool, especially if you're fishing mono and fluorocarbon outside, it just handles the line way better than a size 500 reel would handle it. But you know, you get a setup like this and it's really all you need to catch fish throughout the course of the winter. Now, when it comes to this rod length, what I should say about this, this particular rod is a 32 inch rod and that's a really nice, happy medium for a rod length. So if I'm fishing outside, a lot of times I do prefer a 36 or a 38 inch stick because I'm standing up, but this 32 inch rod also fishes really good in a house and that, that medium light fast power on this deep spoon just can do pretty much anything you want for most walleye applications, unless you're talking about 
really big fish. So, you know, that 32 inch medium light, fast action with a 1000 size reel. And then the line I've got on here, I've actually got a monofilament dot here. This is Suffix Advanced Mono. I just love this mono. It's a sinking mono. It's got really low stretch. It's strong. I mean, this stuff is tough as nails. And then you do want to put, if you're fishing with a mono or a floor or main line, you got to have a little tiny inline swivel. And boom, there you go. That's all you need to catch walleye all winter long. There you go. That's the beauty of having set lines, huh, Jer? Oh, that's sweet, yeah. We we're just jumping around. Beautiful fish, beautiful nice fish. Nice one. Oh, that wow, one, that's a big boy. <laughs> Holy cow, just a minnow and a minnow and a split shot, perfect. Well, that's the benefit of having these stretch covers. Yeah, this is that little snake arm. This one's a C-clamp, so you can just put it on a bucket. This thing kind of hinges, too. I kind of like it, so you're not just looking at a fixed position with the rod. It can kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Not only does this, you know, does the dead stick bend, but then this also leverages a little bit too. So you can kind of get an, if you can't see the tip of the rod, a lot of times you can see that the angle of the rod has changed too, so. Yeah, the nice thing is about these is no matter how hard they pull, they're not gonna pull it out of this. Yeah, it's like It fits right in there and it's not gonna, not gonna come out with you lift it out. So another beautiful one. Heck yeah. This is a slick little deal too for the set line deal. We just put one of these right next to the hole and you know, Minnows stay fresh and healthy and... Yeah, the nice thing is if they start to tip over as the minnows do, you actually dip it right back in there. And, or you can drill a second hole and just leave it right next to the other hole and let it kind of flow through there and keep that water nice and fresh for the minnows. Yeah, I mean, you guys use it... I thought it was cool when you guys tip up fish. Those big pike, you put a couple big sucker minnows in right next to the tip up, just drill a second hole there, and then instead of having to run back to the bucket every time, you've got minnows just sitting right right there so yeah those things are handy they actually made those bait caddies for summer fishing you could pull throw it behind the boat and put it in your live or whatever but they've really transitioned into the ice marker as well you said they're super handy and they keep the minnows nice and fresh perfect in business back at it boom it's that magic hour and it's my favorite time to be out here so let's join mike and ty as they hit prime time on the missouri river all right, it is late December and we're out in the prairie. We're out on Lake Oahe in the Dakotas with Ty Shadeen and our buddy from Oahe Wings and Walleyes, Chad Schilling. And uh, we're going to target some walleyes. It's, I guess you'd call it early ice, right? I mean, yeah. it's like it hasn't been here that long, but enough to do wheelers and we're going to go for walleyes and whatever else bites, right? Whatever pulls. Yeah, you. Uh... Early ice would be an understatement just behind us. That part was open like six days ago. When you get back in the tributaries, we have six to 10 inches here on back. So we're safe back here with the wheelers. Awesome. Nice thing about where we're at, you know, you have so many things to go after, perch, pike, walleyes, smallmouths, crappies. Yeah. And we're going to go after walleyes right now. Should we get going? Absolutely. I'd say let's, let's do We this. got a little bit of time left. <laughs> One thing over here in South Dakota, on Lake Oahe, you're allowed four lines in the winter. So um, I'm a huge tip up fan anyhow. Sometimes they can drag you down, but a lot of times they can show you where fish are too. So just cause we got a few guys and we're uh, out on a big area, I'm just gonna spread a few minnows down on flags here um, and see if we can find fish. So we'll maybe have a few tip ups up in the 25 to 30 foot range and then fish out into the 35 to 40 foot range with our jigs and try to figure out where these fish are. I think I will uh, actually put some out myself. The more lines the better. You can take this whole edge and cover a lot of ground and just see where they're at. Jag them between 45, 40, 30, up to 25 feet because those fish are just moving right now. So, Absolutely. You know, we've been coming out here fishing with you for I don't know how long, five, ten years. Walleye fishing and pheasant hunting and tons of stuff. And one thing I'll say is this is like a really cool lake and a really cool place. It's, we have tons and tons of lakes in our home state of Minnesota and great fishing, but coming out here is always something special just because of the, the beautiful country you see. And it's just a dynamic lake, isn't it? I mean, you've lived here your whole life, are always out here guiding in the summer, but you do a bunch of fishing in the winter too. So I need to let everybody know what it's like ice fishing out here on Oahe. I'll do that, yeah. It, uh... <laughs> It's a great fishery, and like Mike was saying, it's so diverse. You never know. Every year's different. We have some years it's froze up by early, mid-December, and we're out here with vehicles by Christmas, and the next year you're still fishing out of the boat right here at the mouth of Swan Creek in this area. 
Ty. <laughs> Ty. Ty. Ooh, is this gonna be number two? <laughs> I think so. It's uh, it's ever changing. The size of the fish never seems to stay the same. The numbers are out of control. So that's sort of the story out here. There's really big walleyes, some decent walleyes, and then tons of these, these 15, 16, 17 inch fish, and they're just super fat. Super and healthy. Some years they raise our limits up. We've had it as high as 14 per person a day. This is why, exactly why this fishery is so healthy. And we've had it like for a lot of years, like it is now, four fish per person a day. Thanks South down, Dakota walleyes, Jack, huh? What do you think of that? Always been a fishery you know you can go get your eaters on, winter and summer. But we're definitely finding the future fish. You can plow through a whole bunch of 13 to 18 inch walleyes and take home your table fare. In the last year, year and a half, we've been catching good, not numbers, you get one or two. I've had up to six, seven big fish a day. Um, fish over 25 inches all the way up to, I've had them 32 and a quarter here just a month ago. So right now it's about as healthy as I've seen it. We got a flag going right now, somebody might want to go catch one, but. <laughs> Pretty well kept secret. I mean, look, we got my dad a mile away and that's the closest guy we have out on the system. So it's an area where you sure don't have to go fight the crowds and it's not as complex. People think it's, people get overwhelmed with the size of the body of water, but it's pick a point, fish from deep to shallow on it, move to the next one and just keep bouncing around till you find them. Spread out some tip ups and you can figure them out real quick. Not real big, but it's probably another eater. You know, early December like this, you can put these out deeper and or later in the year, we'll put them up shallow and put them all for pipe. Right. And then you're fishing two species at the same time and you can cover half a shoreline if you got four or five guys, 16 rod lines out there, so. You guys got a heck of a resource out <laughs> It's pretty fun. awesome. Nice fish. What is it? It's a wall. Oh wow, look at that. Wow, well, for crying out loud, that fish. Nice was... one, Mike. That was 10 feet off the bottom, Chad. Is he like really? He's done those trees. Look at that. That's a, That's a perfect. Like, yeah, if you're gonna eat, eat one, there we go. Like a 17, 18 inch fish. Right as the sun's getting ready to hit the trees. So we've been sort of mixing it up with different baits. There we go. Got him. Ty's been doing well on the tip up in a minnow. Um, it's a walleye. Sweet. Walleye. <laughs> Go! Wahi walleyes, look at that. Chad's been getting them on a jig. He had his heels dug in, he was pulling hard. And I've been using the plain old jig and wrap with just the number three jig and wrap. And I guess when fish are aggressive, it don't matter, right? They hit it, but. They, when they want to eat, they'll eat usually. You so. go with what you're confident in, so. And he started 10 feet off the bottom? Yeah. That's where you yeah, see I, him? Yeah, I reeled up to him thinking, well, maybe it's a tool be or crappie or something. And the one I caught right before you, I was stirring the mud and he just hit it. Yeah, oh, there's another one. <laughs> Another oh, flag. flag. <laughs> there we go. Now I things are it. happening. I didn't hear it that. Oh, there's one in there too, Mike. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll go this way. <laughs> Chad, you go get that one. <laughs> Fish? This one's decent. Good one over here. Yep. Woohoo! You know what? <laughs> this is a nice fish. He made a run at me. Oh, wow. oh, oh, oh there he goes. There he goes. Me? Big one? Oh. That was like a four. It was like a four or five pounder. Yeah. So oh. Right at the ice. <laughs> Were you horsing him or what? Oh, it must have had my heels dug in. Yeah. Oh. Dang it. That was a nice fish. <laughs> that was the one we wanted. Hey, I did tell bigger. you if you're going up shallow, you'll get a good one, right? You <laughs> take credit no matter what. Yeah, I'm done. Oh, here comes one. Oh, come on. There he is. Little. Well, maybe not too bad. So right now I am using mono on this walleye stick, which is kind of pushing it for how deep we're fishing, but you can get away with it. I've got that advanced, Suffolk is advanced mono on it, and it doesn't have much stretch to it, so I can kind of cheat a little bit and fish deeper. So, let's see, I think we got us another, another cutter here. One that we can keep, you betcha. Oh, the other one, Chad, you want oh, a redemption? No! Come on, Chad, we'll see what he's made of. Ooh. Oh, Jack, Jack's gonna come help. He's a seasoned tip-up dog. He knows what's going on, don't he? 
Well, it's another one of them ones that just wants to keep going. <laughs> Come here, you. Have a seat. Guess watch. what? Another horse. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bouncing, though. A little more bouncing, but no, not nothing like the last one. But still oh, yeah. a nice fish. That is a quality. Here, buddy. I can't have you get away. I'll never live it down with this crew I fish with. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bottom line is you could jig and jig and jig and probably catch you in it, but this just kind of makes it more fun. It is fun because you get to race your buddies to it and if you get a little <laughs> hockey playing going while you're bumping each other off the tip-ups on the way. <laughs> exactly. So Cool. Good Look deal. There. Nice. A perfect eating Boy, size Boy, is he He come out of that deep water. Oh, right in front of you. Right oh, that there. That one just popped. Oh, he's <laughs> really super cool. You got him? I don't know. It looks like a giant. It looks like one for your belly is what it feels like. All yeah, right. Yeah. Well, talk about a system, huh? Holy crap. This is healthy. Just tons and tons, like Chad said, of 12 to 18, 19 inch walleyes. It's like, how can you beat that? Yep, that's what we got. Probably yeah, a what? Kick size. Yep. Look at that. Look how fat it is, too. Healthy fish. If you're going to design a walleye to devour, that's. Right there. I so. like I like to devour it. Yeah. Looks like your dog does Oops. too. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah, fish. So. Now this pizza for breakfast is pretty good, but it could be better. So let's join Joel Nelson as he shows you how to make one of the best breakfasts on the ice. We're out here doing some night fishing tonight and you know, one of the things when you're up late chasing rattle reels and you're getting up, uh, breakfast can become an afterthought the following morning. So we're actually gonna show you a recipe that we've done a few times in our wheelhouse where you're actually making the recipe for breakfast before we even go to bed. So the idea is, is with this crock pot, we're gonna make somewhat of a breakfast casserole that'll cook all night. And no matter how many times you have to get up in the middle of the night to check rattle reels, get fish, you're gonna wake up to a hot breakfast that's really as easy as scooping it out of the crock pot and eating it, which is really nice when you're busy with all kinds of different activities. So let me show you how you do it. We'll start with those hash browns. It starts with just cutting open this bag of hash browns. We're gonna go through the whole thing. It's pretty much frozen. So if you're starting with frozen hash browns, uh, it's gonna take eight to nine hours total time. You can dump about a third of them in. Uh, even amount throughout the bottom of the pan. And the one thing with potatoes is they need a lot of seasoning. So we're gonna go ahead with every round of potatoes. Got just a little bit of salt here. And we're just gonna sprinkle some salt in there. You could certainly add some pepper in there. Um, I also like uh, kind of an all-purpose seasoning. This Yeti dust is a great all-purpose kind of seasoned salt that's great on just about everything, so I'll even sprinkle a little bit of that in there. Again, remember, potatoes can take a, a fair amount of seasoning. And from there, we're gonna layer in about a third of our sausage. Kind of sprinkle it around. Just looking for kind of equal coverage area here. No big deal, you can be rough about it. The last part of the layering process is just some cheese, so I'll just kind of sprinkle that in there and so after you add the cheese, that's really the last part of each layer. We've got potatoes, sausage, and cheese, and we're gonna do that three times before we finally add our egg mixture. So let's go ahead and do as we did before. Add potatoes again. Season just like we did before. And the next bit of our sausage. And again, top with cheese. Now we add the final layer. Last part of the sausage. Now it's time to mix up our eggs. So literally all we're gonna do is crack one dozen eggs into a bowl. We're gonna add one cup of milk. Basically stir that up and dump right over the top of it. And it'll work its way all the way down through each of those layers and all that seasoning that we put down. You can take the remainder of the cheese, 
and dump it all over the top. Or you can wait to the morning and dump it on and just right before you're serving it and that would work too. But all we have left to do is literally put the cap on and we're ready to go to bed. We'll get all the rattle reels we want and in the morning we'll have a hot breakfast ready for us. Well, it's been a long night. Uh, we chased down some rattle reels, we caught some fish. Uh, we're tired. Thank goodness I don't have to make breakfast this morning because I really don't feel like it. So pretty decent breakfast to just show up and eat first thing in the morning. Carve out a little chunk here. Scoop it up. Pretty nice hearty breakfast and uh, be able to have some of this and hit the open ice, maybe fish in the house some more and uh, free ourselves up with a little bit more time to do exactly what we came here to do, which is fish more than prep. This question comes from Jake Kersetter. Jake, I hope I got your last name right. And the question is, what size hook do you recommend upsizing to on a number five jig and wrap? I'm fishing a number three jig and wrap now, but I believe the number five comes with a size 10 hook on it. And so I'd go to a size eight, pretty much with all the, the jig and wraps, if you just step up one size larger. So with the five, size five that has a standard 10 on it, go to an eight. Uh, the standard round bend is great, but I also really like the VMC hybrid treble for it. So not the short chain, but the regular hybrid treble. It gives you a little more gap, so you can put a minnow head on there if you so choose. And so for me, every time I'm ice fishing, I always do upsize the hook on the jig and wrap just because you can get a little meat on it and it's got a lot better purchase. So this is a really good question from Ron, and he wants to know rip and wraps versus jig and wraps for hard water walleyes. Now, it all depends on the mood of the fish and the type of water you're fishing, but my general rule of thumb, rip and wraps for low light and dirtier water, and jig and wraps in clearer water or higher skies. Now, the reason for that is rip and wraps have got rattles. They're loud and noisy. They call fish in. So in that dirtier water or lower light, it helps fish to find your bait. Jig and wraps are all visual. It's all about the sight and the action of the bait. There's no rattles, so they're not putting off vibration and noise. And so it's, it's less likely to spook a finicky fish if you're not ringing a dinner bell on their face and they're getting a good look at it. So let the fish tell you what they want. If they're really hot to trot, early ice, late ice, bust out the rip and wrap. And if they're a little bit fussier, you have clearer water, jig and wrap really shines. Hey everybody, Jason Rylander here. We got the question from Zbass R2 on when the best time of year or month uh, to target burbot during the day. I've found the best day bite, the most consistent day bite happens during the spawn. And for us in Northern Minnesota, that's that mid-March. Uh, St. Patrick's Day is usually a, a good time frame to target burbot during the day when they are spawning. All right, this one is from Eight Meals, and the question is regarding Hummingbird's Mega 360. The question is, is this a DIY project from stuff that you pull from your boat, or is it an ice package? Well, the answer to that one is really both. So, Hummingbird has this plate here, this adapter plate for the 360. So you can pull your Mega 360 off your boat if you want to have just a dedicated ice unit. Uh, you can, of course, just buy the transducer along with this bracket. If you do it, I'd recommend getting a heading sensor. So it's probably not the most convenient to take the heading sensor off of your boat. So that's an accessory you'd want to want to add. So I'd make sure you get the plate plus the heading sensor. And yes, you do need a Hummingbird Helix unit that's size eight or larger with either mega down imaging or mega side imaging. There are a number of accessories. So if you jumped on Hummingbird's website, you'd be able to find what you're, you're going to need. So you're going to need an adapter cable. You're going to need this shuttle kit. You might already have one of those. I would definitely recommend getting a lithium battery. I've got an 18 amp hour battery for this one. This happens to be a Helix 9 DI unit and a, a couple other cables is what you need. So it's not just something that you go to the store, this thing's all gonna be assembled. It is a bit of work to put the thing together, but it is a really powerful tool to have out on the ice. Oh, what a tank! Look at this girl! I got a comment from Joe Riesland. That guy is always yelling. Someone needs to tone him down a little. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't get excited. Actually, 
I will admit, I get super excited when it comes to fishing, and you know what? I'm living the dream. I get excited about fishing, and that's why I do it, not only as a hobby, but for a living. So I will definitely try to tone it down a little bit. Don't yell so much, but uh, like I said, I uh, love to fish, and I love big fish, and that's when I get excited. All right, that wraps up this show. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out our website where you can sign up for our newsletter. We'll also be releasing new content each week on our social platforms. And stay safe out on the ice. Oh, back down he goes. I'm used to musky fishing. Those style of fishing is exhausting for me type. <laughs> Holy cow, I got one. <laughs> that was crazy. That's how you do it, boys. You gotta take a nap. <laughs>